Okay, welcome to Nose Yesterday. This is the show for developers that are self-taught or have been coding bootcamps, and it's where I find out how they've become successful. I'm joined today by Per Borgen, who's the CEO and co-founder of Scrimba, which is a really cool website for learning to code. So yeah, welcome to the show, Per. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit about Scrimba and how it's different from other ways that you can learn to code on the internet? Yeah, uh, so the big thing with Scrimba is that it is, um, it looks like a video, but it's actually not a regular video. It's something much better that helps new developer, any developers uh, who are learning a, a new subject, get their hands on the keyboard and actually code. So it's really hard to explain what it is without seeing it, but you can imagine if VS Code and uh, the, the video format like MP4 uh, had a baby uh, together, and that is Scrimba. So essentially what it does is that you can watch through uh, the scrim, which we call it, uh, where you see the, the, the teacher code as a regular coding tutorial on the screen, but then you can pause and jump into the code and experiment with the teacher's code on your own. So it almost becomes this kind of peer programming session where you code a little bit, teacher codes a little bit, you code again and back and forth. Yeah, no, it's really cool. Like um, I've used it myself and yeah, just like you say, it's, um, it's different because you can, yeah, if someone, if you're watching like a coder teach a react video you can like yeah pause it and edit it right right there in the screen so i guess with lots of other coding if you're following along on youtube you have to be like uh installing everything and like typing yeah. out the code to like to keep up with them and stuff like that so it's very it's it's like purely like interactive yeah, and, and that uh, actually setting up the system is a big hurdle for a lot of beginners. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it can take hours, and that's not what you want to spend your time doing when you're, when you're just starting out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so how, uh, how come you created Scrimba in the first place? Like, did you see, like, a gap in the market, or, or what was it? So I'm not the inventor of the Scrimba format. That's uh, my CTO uh, and co-founder, Sindra. Uh, and he created actually because he had created his own programming language, uh, which is called Imba. So that's where the name Scrimba comes from. Uh, and he, as all developers, he hates writing documentation. Uh, but he, he he had to write documentation when he open sourced uh, the language because he wanted to share it with the world. Obviously, it's a bad idea to write a programming language that only you know about. So, mm -hmm. had had to do that. Uh, but writing documentation is really boring. So he thought, well, how how about I just record some tutorials instead? That that looks fairly simple, judging from like YouTube tutorials. But it turns out actually that recording a vi good polished video tutorial is a ton of work and it's a lot of hassle. So uh, because you have to first download kind of a, a video editing program, and then you have to uh, set up your system nicely, set up your, uh, your, your uh, like desktop and, and then make sure you have everything in place. And then you start recording and then you talk yourself into a corner or your mom calls or something happens. And then you have to start over again and try to do it again and again until you get the perfect shot. Or afterwards, you have to, uh, if you don't want to do a perfect shot, but rather want to stitch together all of your mini perfect shots, then you have to like go into Final Cut Pro and do lots of video editing, which is a hassle. And then you export it, and then you upload it, and then YouTube re-encodes it. And basically, what Syndra realized was that oh, something that takes me two minutes to explain will take me an hour to create a video tutorial about. There has to be a better way. And then he started thinking about, well, what if we instead just record what I do in my editor and that'll be able to be replayed uh, online in, an, in the same editor? Uh, that would also um, um, kind of jump over all of these like processing things because, uh, or processing steps because the format would be much more lightweight 
So screen is a hundred times more lightweight than video. So basically, uh, he was he 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 started uh, instead of working on the Imba documentation, he started working on Scrimba itself, the tool to help him as a teacher uh, teaching Imba to others. Uh, and then he, he he created this and showed it to me, and we had been working together on a different startup before. Uh, that was before I was learning to code. Um, but now I had learned to code and had become really passionate about teaching people how to code. So he showed it to me and was like, hey, what do you think about this? And I was like, oh, this is amazing. Uh, and yeah, we started talking about uh, starting a company around that technology uh, because, um, yeah, uh, we, we knew that we worked really well together. But uh, even though our previous startup failed. So yeah, long story short, uh, we decided to start Scrimba and yeah, here we are five years later. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so if you like, I don't know, met your cousin in the street or something and like, how would you, or anyone for that matter, how, what do you think are like good reasons to learn to code or how would you persuade someone or, or like, how do you talk to someone about learning coding? Well, I think first and foremost, that the, the motivation should come from within. Uh, like, uh, nobody, I, I don't try to push people to learn to code. Uh, sure. It should be their uh, choice uh, because I think uh, when it comes from within, it, they're much more likely to succeed. But, but uh, let's say that they are a little bit motivated. Then there, there's like obvious benefits with the world around you is, is turning into um, is, 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 is digitizing like every industry is being digitized and you you spend <laughs> people spend the majority of their time with a computer or a cell phone or, or like a mobile so uh, do you want to understand the technology around you or do you just want to be oblivious to it uh, also uh, it opens so many career opportunities so so that's obviously a, a good uh, argument as well but what i think what attracts me most with coding is that I realized after I started with it that it's a really creating endeavor, you know, a creative endeavor. Like you start with a blank file and then you write some code and it turns into a product that creates value in the world. That is just fantastic and so, so much fun to do. And I think if, if more people were introduced to that way of coding, like let's solve a problem and not the like CS way of learning to go, which is like, let's start with data types, which is just yeah. <laughs> unrelatable for a beginner. Then I think a lot more people would have like got, um, gotten interested in uh, or, or become interested in coding. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I like it on Scrimba how you do a course on like, learning kind of plain JavaScript and it's got like a, a counter app for, I think you had, you once had a job where you had to like <laughs> count people going through a train station or something like that. Yeah, correct. Um, and there's like a blackjack app where you can like learn to make a card game. So those are things like most people like have probably played blackjack at some point in their life. So yeah, it's not starting off with like tons of theory that are, maybe quite boring or like hard to relate to for beginners. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so like, how did you, how did you like learn to code yourself then originally? Cause you're obviously like a self-taught developer. Yeah. So I um, started out like for the, my first uh, experience with coding, I think was uh, called Academy as many others back in like 2012 or something. Um, Back then, I had started, I, the reason I got interested in it was because I'd started a company. I was very into literature at the time, or still like literature, but, but not as uh, much into it as, as I was there uh, then. So I'd uh, started a startup, which was kind of a digital publisher that published uh, digital books. Uh, and we kind of, uh, after a while, ended up on like kids' books on iPad, because that turned out to be a good business. Or, 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 possible to create a little bit of a business around at least and doing that we had to obviously code these um, ipad apps or, or get developers to code them at the time i didn't know how to code and i just through that experience realized the power and the importance of coding 
and started getting interested in learning a little bit, even though I, at the time I thought I had to uh, go to the university to be a, become a like, proper coder, uh, so to speak. Uh, so, so I started with that. Um, and and for, about, for a couple of years, as I ran that company, I learned a little bit on the side here and there. But then uh, the company failed. So um, we had to shut it down, uh, which was really painful. And what I kind of jumped on immediately as kind of a lifeline at that point was coding because I'd, I'd re I realized that I found it a lot or, or that it was a lot of fun to write code. So uh, w when we kind of uh, shut that company down, I, I started uh, focusing more on coding, just, just sitting at the office, which we still had uh, with, with one of the other co-founders and just coding uh, uh, and uh, realized that I wanted to try and make this into a profession. So I applied for a bunch of coding boot camps and ended up in a fantastic one in the UK, in London, cool. which, yeah, uh, which is called Founders and Coders. Oh, I, uh, I know this one. I've, I yeah. think Harry, I think my friend Harry Dry, who runs ah. Marketing Examples, I'm pretty sure he did that because he learned that I think they have a campus in like Palestine, but uh yeah, sorry, carry on. That's awesome. I didn't know that he went there as well. I um, think so. That's I think awesome. So. Um, yeah, it, it's a fantastic uh, concept because it, it's fully community-driven, it's free, and peer-to-peer -peer based. So what they basically do or did when I when I was there is they put you together with like 15 other people in, in a room and divide you into groups of four, and you get a task every week, like this week you're going to build this. Go ahead. And you search for the answers to yourself uh you can ask like alumni who hang around and stuff like that um but but mostly it's, it's about peer learning and it was like just the most uh, uh it was the best learning experience i've ever had uh was so much fun uh, uh and like I, i'd never had an uh, experienced learning in, in that way uh ever before uh, like waking up super motivated to continue uh, hacking on this week's product or product. So super fun. Uh, went there for about four months and then I moved back to Oslo because I, I was in, I moved from Oslo to London for that and applied for uh, a few jobs and ended up getting a job in a startup in Norway, which I knew a little bit from beforehand. Cool. Awesome. Uh, I was going to ask, um, because you're like from Norway, uh, which is like a really cool country, which I've visited and it's lovely. <laughs> so I want to say that like up front, <laughs> I've got nothing, <laughs> totally love Norway and Norwegians. But because in Norway, there is, you know, extremely low unemployment and yeah. like very high salaries. I think like the Tesla is the like, number one selling <laughs> car in Norway. How yeah. come you because it's quite a good place, I guess I'm saying to be an employee, why did you choose to become uh, an entrepreneur instead of like, you know, having like a safe salary and everything? Yeah. So I, I remember thinking when starting Scrimba, it, it wasn't obvious, how, how, or obvious, obviously it wasn't obvious if it would work out. Uh, and, and I had a lot of doubts, to be honest, when, when uh, Sindra and I talked about that, I wasn't, it wasn't obvious that I would take the jump. Um, but I, I, I did do, I did like two other projects, uh, small side projects while I worked at my first developer job, I remember. Uh, so I kind of had that urge to do something. I, I just love launching products and, and see building them and seeing them grow. It's just such a, such a drug for me. So mm -hmm. I kind of had to, I knew I wanted to start a company again. And I think, um, uh, uh, the, the kind of the safety net in Norway works the opposite way for me because I knew that I could get a job if I failed. So mm. worst case, uh, I, I would just take a hit uh, or my pride would take a hit. Uh, I wouldn't risk um, that much financially. Uh, and actually, I, I, I realized that since I would be making less as a founder than as a developer... I kind of framed it out. Yeah, worst case, I have to stop being a founder and go get a regular job and thus get a big race. So worst <laughs> case, I get a race. That's kind yeah. of the yeah. way I tried to frame it. That's uh, that's uh, excellent. That's a really positive way to frame it. Yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, I, I think that's actually, and, and uh, there's a lot of, I've been thinking a little bit about this and uh, there's kind of the, the, the big discussion about how, uh, for example, taxes will help, will, will, uh, if, if you have welfare tax, uh, for example, that that will demotivate people from starting companies because it'll take some of their upside away. Uh, and I think the opposite way, I think if you have welfare taxes and use that to provide the rest of the, uh, um, the rest of the um, uh, like population with a safety net, mm -hmm. uh, then a lot more people will jump and take the risk because when you, if you fail, you, you don't like, like happens in the, like it happens in the U S if, if, if you fail and you don't have a health insurance uh, and suddenly you get sick, I mean, uh, that that's life threatening. So luckily, yeah. though, in Norway, we have that safety net. And I, uh, I, I think that creates more entrepreneurship um, uh, rather than less. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, I've, I've had that feeling sort of the same because I, like, I'm based in the UK and we have like public health care. So I, it's never been a consideration for me, like, should I start a business? Uh, yeah. Because if I get sick, I can always, you know, get free healthcare. Whereas I've got a friend, well, yeah, I've got a friend in the US who's kind of been like, oh, I want to start my own business and like quit my job. But it's such a risk because yeah. if anything goes wrong and I've, yeah, it's weird as well because I've also heard entrepreneurs in the US on podcasts say like, you know, uh, I had to become a multimillionaire to make sure that like I'm, you know, uh, to care, take care of myself and be sure I'll be okay and like obviously wow. that's n not like not a factor <laughs> in other countries so no uh, uh, I I don't know if I would at all take the leap if I if I was based in the U.S. and because I'm actually quite risk averse hmm. so yeah feeling yeah. really really lucky that I uh, that I'm from from where I'm from yeah yeah that's a good point and yeah that's a <laughs> it's a very good point I think that yeah, the worst that's happened is you can get a <laughs> safe, secure job. So that's cool. Yeah. After you had learned to code and you got your first job, what was the what was the interview like? Basically, what I did was um, I I went to an event where I knew that the CTO of the startup I applied to would be. Cool. Um, so, and I knew him a little bit beforehand because he would, would kind of my previous startup and that company had been in in, in an accelerator together. Uh, not the same batch, but like I'd, I'd met them a few times. Um, and um, they were looking for React developers. So I just, we, we talked a little bit at that event and I told him that, hey, if you're looking for React devs, just let me know. And he was like, oh, actually we, we happen to do that. I yeah. of course knew that at the time. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and he was like, yes, send me, send your application. So I did that and had a few meetings. I uh, don't exactly remember the order, I think it was like three meetings uh, or interviews and then a technical test, like take home test, which uh, uh, I think I, I asked to, to be able to do it over the weekend uh, mm -hmm. instead of just like uh, delivering it the day after. Uh, and they were like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then I spent all my time uh, that weekend <laughs> coding it. So I, I disproportionate uh, effort I put into it. Uh, at least compared to what I think they ex expected, so it became uh, pretty good. Um, yeah. And they, they, I knew that they got uh, impressed by it. Uh, so yeah, got the job, and uh, yeah, yeah, nice one. Uh, getting back to Scrimba itself, I think obviously I've featured, I've interviewed uh, Altair, who is yeah. a cleaner. This guy was a cleaner on cruise ships, and then. He learned code uh, with Scrimba, and now he's like working remotely as a developer, which is like yeah. a pretty cool change of like going from like scrubbing toilets to like <laughs> scrubbing code. <laughs> yeah, uh, so sure. that's like a that's pretty amazing. cool. Yeah, it's a pretty cool story. Um, do you have any other like favorite stories from people that have learned code through Scrimba? Yeah, actually, just today or this week. Uh, uh, I, I read, uh, or I read the article today actually about one of our uh, students uh, who started coding uh, September last year, and in December, like less than three months later, got a remote developer job at a YC Y Combinator backed startup. 
Wow. Which was pretty insane. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Fred- awesome. Frederick, uh, a Swedish guy. Cool. Uh, just so cool to see. Even if he's Swedish and you're Norwegian? <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i'm kidding yeah, but, <laughs> yeah it's um, kind of like it, we, we we have love for each other as well not just yeah uh, <laughs> of course of course uh yeah that's awesome especially yeah. for like a, a yc bat startup um yeah and we have tons of these stories i mean it happens all the time yeah yeah definitely how many people work at scrimba then because i know i've been on the you've got a podcast as well which i've been on with uh, Alex, who's from Wales, yeah. and he's yeah. like, yeah, super nice guy to talk to him. Uh, how many of the, how many people are at Scrimba? So we're currently nine full-time uh, employees and uh, three part-time. Cool, cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I was speaking to, yeah, I was speaking to a friend earlier today, and I was kind of like, I don't have any employees, but I guess if I grew a business i would like kind of like that number like number yeah. of people that you can fit around a dining room table <laughs> is yeah. how i how i explained it but um yeah obviously yeah. like everyone's different some people like hiring loads of people but I, we're, um, we're, we're not we're like i i'm also more on that i i we're, we're trying to, to hire slowly uh deliberately basically and rather try to uh increase the capacity of each team member than just hire new people whenever a problem arises because i think yeah i'm also not the i've never dreamt of having a ton of employees uh, that's not why i'm doing this basically um, it's, um but 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 just when the need arises uh, we and we just have to get new people we we do it yeah no that's it's a good i liked what you said about kind of building people's capacity so if you have like uh i know that alex for instance, hadn't done podcasting before, but now he's like got into it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a nice way to look at it. And yeah, I think it's um, I know other founders that they'll talk to friends or there'll be events and people are like, "So how many employees does your startup have?" <laughs> As if that's kind of like a weird. It's yeah. a really weird metric for success. Like yeah. I think uh, it's the base camp uh, guys, uh, Jason Freed and DHH. Uh, they talk, they have the kind of opposite view. If you hire someone, it means you've failed in some degree to, to not be able to do this on your own or like automate it. Or so they try to go, I, I, they, are, they have a refreshing take on, on, uh, on these kinds of uh, like company building things. So I, uh, yeah, I read the, the, one of the books and, and listened to their podcasts really inspiring yeah definitely i think they've uh i think they've also got like uh i think they've got like a hard limit of like 50 employees or something like that mm. and or 80 or something and they're like not going to go above that um in terms of like people learning through scrimba is there are there any people that are like like what what's the typical like age of or profile of someone that's using scrimba do you think it's like so uh, diverse. It's mm. it's teenagers and people in their sixties, basically. Yeah, both awesome. <laughs> and uh, it's people from literally all over the world, from all kinds of different professions. Like uh, like people who've been uh, working uh, on a cruise ship, uh, scrubbing toilets, basically. And we have people who are uh, PhDs uh, wow. in, in like science. Uh, fields and and artists and just so much which is just I, I think it's so great because there's so many problems that should be solved with code going forward and even though a lot of developers who are like just their sole interest is is like technical and, and coding um, and maybe CS degrees from Stanford and stuff like that. Uh, they, they are great, of course, to, to, to throw different problems at. Uh, there's a certain kind or there's a different perspective you get if you're like an ex-lawyer learning how to code because then you know the problems that lawyers face or you're mm. an ex-healthcare worker or an artist. And there's so many cool, I, I think it's good that we get much new perspective or, or a lot of new perspectives into coding these days. Yeah, definitely. I was speaking to someone uh, yesterday, Caitlin, who used to work in like uh, beer sales. So mm. like 
I guess like a kind of corporate and a corporate sales job for a beer company. And yeah, she was saying like, there's probably like the biggest difference between that and like, yeah, programming. But she was saying that it's really good because she's really good at like, you know, communication and sales and she's like really outgoing and that helps when she works at companies because she can, she's really good at talking to people because sales is just, you know, basically talking to people all day. So yeah, it's good to have different skill sets. For uh, sure. And yeah. it's so valuable to, to, to bring that into the, your new career, like remembering the strengths you have from your previous uh, jobs and, and experiences. Yeah, definitely. I think as well, a good thing about, you know, learning with Scrimper or having, you know, more self-taught developers is just the fact that it's uh, it's really opening the field up to more people and it's getting a much more uh, diverse crowd of people into into coding because sure. I, I think like, uh, I don't know if it's still <laughs> still your tagline, but I think on Scrimba, it, used, it maybe still is like, learn to code for the price of a gym membership, which is yeah, like yeah, it's a nice line. <laughs> <laughs> it's or like um the quality of stanford at the price of a gym membership yeah that's our vision perfect perfect uh yeah because i think like as i was saying with caitlin it's kind of this problem where if you have a industry that's only open to people that decided to code when they're 18 uh that's gonna look you know very male and very yeah. white and like very a, very like a tiny small like segment of the population whereas yeah i guess the problem with the college system is it's really like well did you want to do this at 18 no oh well tough luck uh and it's really great that you can be like in your 30s or 50s or whatever and nowadays get into coding and get into like a rewarding like high paid job yeah, totally agree. And uh, it's like we, we don't want politicians who all have been like politicians since they were uh, 18 years old. We want people who have been in the industry and then become politicians or at least a, a, a good chunk of our politicians to be like uh, regular people. Same way with, I think, coding. We, we want uh, people from all industries to to help shape the, the, f- the digital future we're all going to live in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think as well, when you look at things like uh, like you know AI and biases and stuff like that, if you have only a tiny like uh, proportion of the population working in developer roles, then guess what? There's going to be like a lot of biases. Uh, you know, I've heard of crazy things where, like you know, in like washrooms, when you like only only people with hands that are white will like go oh, to wow. use the water and water comes out. And oh, if you don't have white hands, like this is system just doesn't recognize it. So yeah. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's dystopian. So mm. uh, we, we yeah. really have to get more people uh, of all kinds of, uh, yeah. Uh, for, for, from, from, from the entire world and all, ev- all kinds of diversity uh, into the, into the industry. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so how much does uh, the Scrimba cost at the moment for people that are want, interested? So, so it's, it's very variable. So we do purchase power parity. Cool. Uh, so um, at maximum, it's $39 per month. But if you live in a low-income country, we uh, reduce the price basically based upon uh, yeah, a bunch of different factors. So we want to like be roughly as a gym membership uh, in each country, even though we, we can't of course, keep track like a hundred different prices. So we were not <laughs> yeah. exactly at the, and what is the average price of a gym membership? We're, we're roughly trying to get in that ballpark area, but, but yeah, it's very different. And we give discounts if you commit for a longer period of time, because that's good for you. It's, you should commit for half a year or a year. So we have really uh, hot, big discounts for that. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think having it on like, yeah, an affordable level that's a gym membership or maybe like, uh, I don't know, several Netflix subscriptions or something, yeah. however one, however people want to think about it. But it's not like, okay, if I sign up, I guess the best part 
I think one of the best parts about Scrimbo is like, it's not like, oh, if I sign up for this and I don't like it or if it doesn't work out for me, I'm going to be flat broke. It's, you know, it's yeah. not a huge financial commitment, you know. It's not. And also we give away tons of courses for free. Um even courses that are part of like our core curriculum, the front end developer career path, which is kind of our flagship, which takes you from zero to hireable. Uh, that uh, even that uh, we have plenty of courses with which are part of it, which we also give away for free, so that people can get a taste of how it is. Uh, because one thing I don't like with like the existing uh, education system, and also a lot of other online schools as well, is this. Um, uh, this, the, the fact that you you either enroll or you don't enroll and you you pay a ton of money to be able to enroll and then they unveil the material for you you want to be able to kind of peek in uh, and like uh, go to kind of a lecture before mm. you decide uh, and, and like see some of the other lecture old lectures and like even though we're, we're all asynchronous and not live in the sense of our core lectures but you, you get the point we're trying to be as transparent as possible uh, into how how it is on the inside and our community a big part of our community is open to to anyone uh, as well yeah i mean i think that's like yeah that's a really good point because i can remember you know i went to university for something totally different like political science and yeah i had never experienced a lecture before I, before yeah. i like enrolled or anything i think it's i mean i think as well with my kind of like entrepreneur hat on I think it's also smart because people can test it out and it's kind of like, you know, a freemium thing. Like, you know, you can listen to Spotify and then if you want to get the pro version, you can pay for that. And, you know, you can try out Scrimba and then if you, yeah, if you want more, more courses, yeah. you can, you can upgrade. Um, what are, do you, can you share anything that's like up and coming on Scrimba, like future courses or other things you're going to be adding soon? Yeah, um, so we are planning a, a rewrite of our core editor, uh, which uh, which will be uh, deployed hopefully in in the next uh, month or two. <laughs> it's always cool. dangerous to promise. <laughs> yeah, okay. when the feature will be deployed. <laughs> yeah, so, so no it might worries. be later, but uh, it'll be so nice uh, and plenty of new features. Better challenge concept for interacting with the the, the coding challenge you are presented from the teacher, uh, and uh, plenty of other things. Uh, and also, it's um, what uh, what we're planning to do uh, a little or a little bit uh, down the road is enabling students to give code reviews uh, of each other's code, enabling the, the advanced students to give review to the, to review the beginner students code. So that it becomes like uh, you get personalized feedback on your code, uh, sure. but in the Scrimba format. And we did a mm. research project with the school and recording feedback through the Scrimba format works phenomenally well compared to like the traditional way, way of getting a code review via text. So we know yeah. this uh, from from the research, and so we're so super excited about uh, building that out. Uh, also, we will build backend support uh, down the line. Uh, people are asking for that uh, all the time, so so we really need to get it done. But it's pretty hard, and we want to do it the right way. So um, yeah, that that's some some exciting things. Uh, yeah. In terms we, of backend, do you mean things like I know learning Python or something like that? Yeah, uh, Node JS, like building full stack apps, uh, mm -hmm. and also Python is is something we're really interested in. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I guess at the moment there's uh, it leans to more towards you know front end JavaScript, React. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what you're concentrating on. Uh, but yeah, I think that's smart as well because you've kind of like focused on areas where people are probably most likely to get jobs in, and it's like also yeah, it's good to be like have Scrimba really solid on. Uh, one thing before like before yeah. you think about other things uh cool well thanks a lot for being on the podcast uh where can people find out more about you and about scrimba yeah sure thank you very much for inviting me it's been a lot of fun yeah uh, no worries so they can find us on scrimba.com that's s-c-r-i-m-b-a.com uh, i'm at twitter for example at pierre borgen 
so yeah, rec- yeah, reckon that'll be added to the to the show notes. Yeah, and, cool. <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. N- nice one. All right. Thanks again, Paris. Great chatting to you. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. Cheers.